I was thinking about how crazy is it that as a builder, a New Zealand politician is going to spend a couple of hours driving around building sites with me. Pretty much all of this out here is spoken for. Oh, man. You know, we can't put that in the fire and we can't put it in the ground and we can't use it outside. So if you don't know who that is, that is Julianne Genta. She is a Member of Parliament here in New Zealand for the Green Party and I have been given the opportunity to show her the office and the building site. We took her to ITM, I even made some notes. Talk about the issues we're facing in the building industry. This morning as I was getting ready for this, I was thinking about how crazy is it that as a builder, a New Zealand politician is going to spend a couple of hours driving around building sites with me to get my point of view. I feel like that's a privilege. So Julie caught the train out to Abaha, which I thought was awesome. She's passionate about public transport and she actually backs that up with her actions. We came back to the office and one of the first things we talked about is consenting issues. I think she was surprised at how much work there is to navigate. Like I gave her the example of like, we've been working with you, we've locked in your concept, we've agreed on a price and now you say go and I can't do anything for the next seven months on site until we navigate this consenting process. And when we talked about like all the pieces of the chain in that process and how much everybody covering their butts in terms of liability is a problem in that process, I think she genuinely was surprised at that. 3604 is not really, like from a council's point of view, is not really working. No. Like I think what you touched is like, MBA who's setting the rules and then you've got the local council who's interpreting the rules and then you've got the builder who's supposed to be following the rules and it's like this this disconnect. There's some things we could do better, right? And we, all we have to do is change some stuff in the code. Like you say, there might be a better way or a better product. This is the status quo acceptable solution. Yeah. And so then we're forced as builders to just kind of like the path of least resistance. Even though it might not be as good an outcome. Mm. Yeah, totally. And that's something that I would love to see changed. We jumped in the ute with my fresh bumper sticker on it. And I've even given her a sticker to pass on to Jacinda. So Jacinda, if you're watching this, I hope that Clark loves his legitimate ute sticker and he actually uses it. <laughs> How crazy would that be if that actually happens? We went to the local ITM. So this is my local ITM. Sweet. So the crazy thing about, see all those stacks of timber in the back there, pretty much all of this out here is spoken for. Oh, like we are now at the stage, and we'll show you this when we go to virtual, where you have to like lock in your supply of items literally four to five months before you actually need it on site. So what's happening is these places are becoming less of like a pull it off the shelf and more of like a holding yard for right. product. And so at J&K we're getting ahead of the game and um, that's why I put this project manager into his role and this is what I focus on in the office is, is the planning side of building homes. But if you're a small self-employed builder on the tools swinging a hammer, you're now seeing like four to eight week delays on your renovations because you'll come here to get a product and they'll be like, sorry, there's none on the shelf. And by the way, we won't have it on the shelf for another eight weeks or so. Okay. This is Nate, he's my, like, who, he's my main contact here. Met with Lance, the one of the directors there, and Lance and Julie chatted for about half an hour about some of Lance's observations of sp in specific supply chain issues. You know, one of the frustrations we've got in the industry right now is we're seeing all this timber and timber products go overseas. 
as a result we've had a shortage of manufacturing and therefore a shortage of skills in New Zealand. One of the cool things to come out of that discussion was talking about how we need to not only retain more timber product in New Zealand but we also need to be more proactive about retaining the skills and knowledge to manufacture that timber product into useful products. Jeez. We'll see you right. Yeah, we'll see you right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. I'll um, swap time. details in case you want to like. Yes, yeah, totally. It's going to be hard to do with the short term. Yeah, yeah. But how yeah. do we? What are the policies that are going to help in the long term to build up the kind of local manufacturing that we need to enable um, people here to be able to respond to this, you know these issues? Yeah, yeah. I, I think the government has to, has to help in manufacturing. Yeah, absolutely. It has to So from my team, we went up to the virtual rear lot. So I didn't actually know, but Julie was an urban planner, or is an urban planner, was an urban planner before her time in parliament. I see government as being the responsible party to, to fix these things, not individuals and businesses. But it's like, it's government policy that needs to change the framework to make it easier, to incentivize the right thing, to make it the easy thing to do. Forty to fifty percent of New Zealand's landfill waste is from building houses alone. Um, and the problem is, these materials like this, and I'll show you a couple more on site. Where we literally just can't do anything with them other than chuck them in the bin. Yeah. Uh, so scaffold guys had come to drop the scaffold today, which is awesome. So 80 square meter site. This was the front yard of it and rear lot, so already two driveways off one right away. Yeah. And now we're managing to squeeze in one more. And that's the type of work that I see is coming up. That's where like the majority of my workload is gonna be for the foreseeable future, this type of job. We'll have a quick walk around, eh, and meet the guys. Yeah. Just watch your head. Like, obviously it's a building site, it's dangerous. Hey, 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 hey
six weeks ago. Okay. And then the concrete slab was down five weeks ago. And, and now the delays are, from what Lance just said, even further out. So the question is, how do we, what can government do in the short term to deal with the supply crunch? So I just finished lunch with Julie and Genta and I think the thing that's blown me away is that a listed MP commented on my Instagram video that may or may have not been kind of poking fun at a comment they made and then she not only went out of her way to make a comment to me but then when I gave her the opportunity to come to the office and talk about some of the real issues we're facing in the building industry she jumped on that opportunity. It makes me proud to be a New Zealander I suppose that we've still got that like grassroots connectedness. It shows that those politicians are here for us and willing to you know see our point of view. Mm -hmm.